in that Miami raid contain over 90 terabytes of information. Think about that, 90 terabytes. What do you have, like two terabytes on your iCloud storage? Think boy, about you how already much know it what is. it is. It's your boy Laid Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, P. Diddy, you up to bat. Pause. It's your boy Laid Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I gotta drink this water, man. You already know what it is. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. I told you guys I was gonna try to keep up with as much of this Diddy stuff as possible. We got a new video, man. Um, we got seven major P Diddy updates as defense pushes for quick trial and trafficking case. I haven't seen nothing over the past week. I kind of like detached from everything. So I don't know what these seven major things are. We gonna get into it though together. But you make it to the end of this one, man. You a real one for real. Make sure you drop that in the comments. Let's go ahead and get into it. Fire squad. Let's pop it. Let's get it. I'm not gonna talk about anything that I haven't said in court or in the papers. These are all great questions, but I'm just not gonna get into it. So Can you speak about your concerns about the leak uh, and the video? You um, spoken I, about leak. I, I, I did, I did it in the court papers and, and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna stick to the court papers. From a new trial date, to allegations of government misconduct, to issues surrounding an accuser, to a third attempt to get out of pretrial detention, mm. we are breaking down some major recent updates in Sean Diddy Combs' case. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Long Prime, like Jesse Weber. Look, I get it. It can be tough staying up to date on everything that is happening in the Sean Diddy Combs criminal case. There yes. is a lot. There is a lot that has been happening. So what we want to do for you is give you some of the top recent updates on the case so that you're caught up to speed. Now, okay. before I even get into the updates, I have to set the stage. The 54-year-old music mogul still locked up still locked away in the Metropolitan Detention Center out in Brooklyn, Brooklyn as he awaits trial on federal sex crimes charges, racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, transportation to engage in prostitution. Essentially, Jeez. prosecutors from the Southern District of New York allege that Combs used his business empire and resources and associates to lead a criminal enterprise that was engaged in illegal activity like arson, bribery, kidnapping, even the assault and sex trafficking of women, and that mm. this was going on for years. And more specifically, they allege that he brought in male sex workers for these events called freak-offs, freak -offs. these elaborate sexual performances that he forced, threatened, or coerced people to be a part of, even drugging people, mm. filming these sessions. That's what the allegations are. And it's a complicated case. Which brings me to the first update. When on earth is this trial actually going to happen? Well, right, right. at a status hearing last week, prosecutors, the defense attorneys, and the new judge overseeing this case, the Honorable Arun Subramarian, agreed to a trial date of May 5th, 2025. Now, okay. obviously that can change. Now, obviously that can change for a variety of reasons, but it seems to me that the defense has been pushing for this early trial date. I mean, we were suggesting this trial wouldn't happen until the end of 2025, maybe even 2026. Damn. But the reason that it seems to me that Combs is wanting an early trial date is because he's locked up. He doesn't want to be there anymore. Right. And even though he is appealing his bail or his denial of bail, I should say, to a new court, and we're going to get into that in a minute, he and his team may be thinking, Let's get him to trial as soon as possible with the hope that he's acquitted and he can go home and put it all behind him. We don't want him languishing behind bars for another year or two years as he waits to go to trial. But there are a few things with that. Right. You know what could change the trial date? You know what could delay it? If More Combs info. is hit with new charges, if there is a superseding mm -hmm. indictment, mm -hmm. that's when prosecutors go back to the grand jury with new evidence in an effort to indict Combs on additional charges. They, must, they may also mm -hmm. upgrade charges. They may even replace a charge. And that means more discovery, more evidence, yep. more material that needs to be shared, more yep. motions. The timeline would shift. You won't see a May 5th, 2025 date if he's ultimately hit with more charges. Very, very, very unlikely. And in a major update during that hearing, we found out that's not so far-fetched. 
Assistant U.S. Attorney Emily Johnson told the court that the investigation is very much ongoing and that there is a possibility of a superseding indictment. Mm. And why would that happen? Well, it could be that through their investigation, analyzing the digital and physical evidence they collected, speaking with more witnesses, including maybe new people who may have come forward, prosecutors may believe they have probable cause that Combs committed more crimes. Mm. And by the way, it's interesting during this hearing that prosecutors- Man, this only the beginning. For them to say May 5th or something like that, and all these new things keep coming out with, a, with, with Diddy case, like, ain't no telling when the case really gonna start. And when they're gonna be like, all right, this enough, we have enough evidence. Are they just like stopping people from, you know, reaching out to them about, you know, potentially being a part of the case? Like, how does that even work? Said their case as it currently stands will take them about three weeks. And the defense said their case will take them one week. First of all, if there's additional charges, that will change. But mm -hmm. the current case taking three weeks, the defense saying they'll have one week. What that tells me is that the defense is going to mostly focus upon cross-examination of the government's witnesses instead of really calling witnesses of their own. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe the defense will call these alleged male sex workers to say that all of these freak-offs were consensual, that no one was pressured, no one was threatened, no one was forced to do anything. And overall, that idea of this being all consensual seems to be what the defense's main theme will be. Particularly mm. if you believe that victim one in the indictment, who is not named, but a lot of us believe is Cassandra Ventura, Combs' ex-girlfriend who accused him in a separate lawsuit of physically, sexually, and psychologically abusing her. Mm. In this criminal indictment, prosecutors say he sex trafficked victim one through force, fraud, or coercion, meaning forced her to perform commercial sex acts. Now, it would seem to me that if she were the government's star witness, Combs' defense attorneys would spend a lot of time cross-examining her, suggesting that everything was consensual, that she mm. agreed to everything. And by the way, going back to the timeline here, yes, the government says that their case would take three weeks to prosecute, but does that account for the time that the defense would cross-examine their witnesses, how long would the cross-examination of a Cassandra Ventura take? Would right. it take several hours? Would it take a day? By the way, his defense attorney has also suggested that Combs may take the stand. Would that be the majority of the week as well? What would the cross-examination of Sean Combs take? So, Man, did he take the stand? It's going down. Even though we're saying it could be four weeks, I would imagine it would take a little bit longer. By the way, going back to Cassandra Ventura, his defense team most certainly will cross-examine her try to get her to say everything was consensual. That yes, right. she was his girlfriend. Of course, Combs flew her around. Of course, he had sexual activity with her, but he didn't pay her. He didn't promise her anything to engage in sex acts, that she was a willing participant in these mm. essentially orgies. So the estimate from both sides of how long their case will be is very interesting to say the least. But of course, again, that could change if there are new charges. Now, there was another major update that happened, and it was also addressed in this hearing. The defense's argument that the government engaged in misconduct. In a filing from last week, Whoa. Combs Defense Counsel blames the government, more specifically, the Department of Homeland Security, of leaking information and making inappropriate comments to the media. Ooh. And the defense is now asking for an evidentiary hearing to get to the bottom of all this. Ooh. More specifically, they allege that the Department of Homeland Security agents leaked the infamous 2016 Ooh. videotape of Combs wow. reportedly beating Cassandra Ventura in a hotel hallway, which wow. was published by CNN in May of 2024. And remember, wow. that was after the raids on his houses by Homeland Security before Ooh. his arrest. They say they leaked it. So Combs Defense Counsel in this filing wrote, quote, the available evidence makes a prima facie showing that the government, primarily through DHS, has engaged in a seven month campaign with three objects. One, preventing Mr. Combs from getting fair consideration by the grand jury. Two, preventing him from getting a fair trial. And three, mm. strategically leaking confidential grand jury material and information, including mm. the 2016 intercontinental videotape, in order to prejudice the public and potential Ooh. jurors against Mr. Combs. 
pretty startling allegation there. Yeah. And they continue. The government's scheme to undermine Mr. Combs' rights to a fair proceeding has several methods and means. First, there has been a steady stream of false and prejudicial statements made by DHS agents to various press outlets over the last seven months. Mm. For example, Combs' lawyers allege on March 27, 2024, two days after the searches of Mr. Combs' residences, an agent specifically identified as working for DHS made public statements to, among other media, the New York Post, that he believes there is a disturbing history of sex trafficking. We are responding to concrete, detailed, explicit allegations. This is not random. We didn't choose his name out of a hat. We had allegations that we're following up on. Mm. Second, Combs lawyers write, the agents encouraged in a particularly brutal and public search of Mr. Combs' homes, during which they handcuffed Mr. Combs' innocent sons and then marched them before a news helicopter in the press. This was an apparent effort to convey that they had overwhelming evidence mm. against Mr. Combs, justifying the public and brutal treatment of even his children who were handcuffed and manhandled by federal agents armed with assault rifles. Manhandled. Third, Government employees have repeatedly leaked grand jury information and materials to the press to raise public hostility against Mr. Combs. Man, if the government is doing this stuff and they can prove it, that's going to be crazy. ...in advance of trial. And when it came to the source behind the leak of the 2016 tape, Combs' lawyers wrote, an unrelated third party is not a likely source. If a person not in law enforcement were to leak the videotape to a news source, that person likely would have sold the tape rather than simply give it to CNN. Mm. So prosecutors, they responded to this by providing the court with a copy of an email that they had sent to Combs lawyers on October 9th. And it reads, to be clear to our understanding, DHS did not have possession of the videotape prior to CNN's publication of it. Mm. Only the government has authority to obtain grand jury material and the video broadcast by CNN was not obtained through grand jury process. So very interesting there. Now at the hearing, Prosecutor Johnson said that all the defense is trying to do is exclude a damning piece of evidence, seemingly referring to the 2016 videotape. Mm. And that is something Combs lawyers have asked for because if this evidence was improperly leaked by the government, then there is an argument it should be suppressed, that it shouldn't come into Combs' trial. That would be a big win for him. Mm -hmm. Well, Judge Subramanian reserved ruling on whether to order an evidentiary hearing to sort all of this out. He said he wants to wait to review each side's arguments, which are due by November 7th, and then he'll see if a hearing is warranted. Now, what the judge did do during this hearing, and this is going to have an impact, is impose a gag order. Now, this was something mm. that the defense had asked the court to do as well. They wanted to stop the government from disclosing material to the media. The federal prosecutors at the hearing were like, okay, we'll agree to that, but the defense, they need to agree to the same because they Ooh. say the defense hasn't been so innocent in all this. They called out Combs attorney Mark Agnafilo for doing an interview with TMZ right after Combs was arrested in September, where he called the criminal case, quote, a takedown of a successful black man. Ooh. Prosecutor Johnson said this sounded like he was accusing the feds of engaging in a racist prosecution. This is spicy. This is spicy. They going back and forth. Johnson said statements of this sort seriously risk a fair trial in this case. So Judge Subramanian instructed Combs team to propose an order that would govern public statements by both sides. And when reporters flocked around Agnafilo after this hearing, he definitely wasn't as forthcoming as he'd been in the past. I'm not gonna talk about anything that I haven't said in court or in the papers. These are all great questions, but I'm just not gonna get into it. So Can you speak about your concerns about the leak uh, and the video? Um, I, 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 I did. I did it in the court papers, and, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stick to the court papers. As, as you guys all know, let me just finish. As you all know, I made a request today for what we were calling a gag order, and I'm, I'm not going to walk out of court and do anything other than live up to that. So, Talk about right. his so, demeanor in jail and what it's been so, like. So, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to answer any more questions. I, I want to help you guys out, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go back and speak to my colleagues. And um, I'm, and then you know I'm gonna be just done. tell us about but the thanks. MDC and what it's no, like. Yeah. There. Thanks. Can okay. we see him being transferred? Yeah. You said I'm not gonna answer no more questions. Just tell Can us about. Can we see him being moved anytime soon, or is... sir? Which way are you headed today? Now, there was something else that happened during the course of this hearing that we have to address. The amount of discovery in this case. Mm. The prosecution indicated the vast. This picture is crazy. This picture right here is crazy.
vast amount of material for their forensic teams to extract and review. And I'll give you an example. Prosecutor Johnson said this week that 96 devices were seized in those March raids on Combs properties. Phones, laptops, Ooh, hard drives. 96. 51 of the devices were from the LA raid. 36 were from the Miami raid. And nine were taken from Sean Combs himself. In fact, eight Damn. of the devices in that Miami raid contain over 90 terabytes of information. Think about that. 90 terabytes. What do you have, like two terabytes on your iCloud storage? Think what? about how much that is. And she indicated that extracting that data has been a process. I'm sure. The reporting indicates, though, that the prosecutors have been in constant contact with Combs' attorneys regarding this Damn. discovery. In fact, we learned that the government made its first production of material over to the defense on October 7th. So this is ongoing. And what the defense received was search warrants, Combs iCloud reports, Combs mm. iPhone activity. So that's going to be a lot to go through as well. And the prosecution expects to turn everything over to the defense by December 31st. Again, given the sheer amount of data, yeah. it is surprising that we expect the defense to be able to go through all of this and be able to mount a defense by May, right. by May 5th. Very, very ambitious in my opinion. So to be clear though, we don't know what all of this evidence contains, but at the very least, as based on reporting and prior comments from the prosecutors, it, they appear to be in possession of videotapes of perhaps the freak offs, perhaps other alleged criminal activity, but there's probably text messages and photos and a lot to go through as well. Also, while discovery is due by December 31st, I will also let you know that the motions in this case are due by February 17th, 2025, oppositions by March, this is gonna be a long applies case. by March 10th, and then trial on May 5th. Again, ambitious. Assuming there are no snags, assuming there are no further issues, we'll see. Now, there is another update in this case that we have to talk about that wasn't addressed at that hearing. It's something that is happening in a different court. You see, Combs has appealed his denial of bail to a higher court. The oh. Second Circuit Court of Appeals. And remember, two different judges already denied out. him pretrial release. They he said given the gravity out. of the allegations, the weight of the evidence, the potential danger he is to society, the risk of flight, and moreover, allegations that he had been improperly contacting witnesses and alleged victims, Combs should not be let out pending trial. Well, Combs' attorney, Alexandra Shapiro, filed a motion for pretrial release last week with the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. They're and Shapiro opened the motion by writing, quote, This case does involve extreme and unusual circumstances, but yeah. none that typically foreclose bail or warrant forcing Sean Combs to defend himself from a prison cell. Mm. What is extreme and unusual about this case is that Mr. Combs was detained immediately after he was charged, even though he has been in the spotlight his entire life, with many of his purported antics and episodes being widely reported in the press and known to law enforcement authorities. Mm. Indeed, hardly a risk of flight. He is a 54-year-old father of seven, a U.S. citizen, an extraordinarily successful artist, businessman, and philanthropist, and one of the most recognizable people on earth. The sensationalism surrounding his mm. arrest has distorted the bail analysis. Wow. Mr. Combs was not released pending trial, even though he offered to comply with restrictive conditions that would have prevented any conceivable risk of flight or danger. And remember, Combs had offered a $50 million bail package, putting up his Miami home and his mother's home as collateral, promised mm. to stay in constant contact with authorities, only speak to certain people, would have a visitor law. So are they trying to say like they discriminating against Diddy for not allowing the bail? They were like, yo, the charges and the crimes we get, but it shouldn't keep him in, in prison or jail without him being able to be free in regards to being on bail. They're trying to say discrimination? Oggs handed over to the court, only certain people would come to the house. He even proposed having a third party security team monitor his house when he would be under home confinement. And in this motion, Combs denies the government accusations of obstruction. His attorneys concede, yes, he spoke with people about the civil lawsuits he was facing, but says, he wasn't aware that the Southern District of New York was investigating him. And once he realized he was being investigated, the appeal motion says he made sure not to continue contact with those people. Hmm. The motion reads, although the government vaguely described contact with two grand jury witnesses, it proffered no evidence of any threats or intimidation. The government could only state there were 14 total contacts between Mr. Combs and one witness and another witness who was contacted multiple times. Defense counsel explained those contacts involved no obstruction or witness tampering. Mm. For example, one witness 
contacted Mr. Combs, not the other way around. She reached out to Mr. Combs and told him, I'm a grand jury witness. Whoa. After Mr. Combs informed defense counsel, he was instructed not to contact the witness anymore and didn't. Wow. So Shapiro argues the prosecution didn't meet its burden to hold Combs until trial. They've raised a number of very compelling and interesting arguments. Not clear when the court will hear arguments on this or what a decision will be or when a decision will be handed down, but very, very interesting uh, arguments put forward by Sean Combs' defense counsel. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say this. If Combs were to make bail, would he still want a May 2025 trial date? Probably would not. Would he not want to see this trial much later on? After all, he faces a significant risk and possibility of conviction and being mm -hmm. sentenced to serious prison time, perhaps mm -hmm. a minimum of 15 to 20 years behind bars if he's convicted. Why wouldn't he want to be on house arrest for as long as right. possible and try right. to delay this trial as much as he can? Now, he could feel confident in his case. Maybe he wants to hold the prosecution's feet to the fire. Maybe he wants to get this trial over with as soon as possible. But all I'll say is, if he's granted bail and he is released pending trial, do not be surprised if he then tries to delay the trial date. I just put in right. that warning. Now, I will right. say this. Mark Agnafilo did indicate that Combs is not trying to move from the MDC while he awaits the issue on bail. There was reporting that he was requesting to be transferred to a facility in New Jersey, but Agnafilo seemed to say that the MDC had been responsive, so it appears he is going to stay there as he fights this bail issue. And when we talk about major updates in the Sean Combs case, as we talk about potential new charges, I would be remiss if I didn't mention another major update in the Combs case. A Texas attorney named Tony Busby announced that his law firm plans to pursue legal action against the music mogul. And this would be on wow. behalf of more than 100 victims. More than two dozen of those future plaintiffs say they were just kids when Combs allegedly assaulted them, including a nine-year-old. And attorney Busby says it's not just Combs caught up in the crosshairs. The wall of silence has now been broken. Yep. And victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us. That shit crazy. With people claiming, people claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. We now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs, as well as claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name mm -hmm. as defendants as we file these individual cases. I expect that through this process, many powerful people will be exposed. Many We've dirty secrets will be revealed. We know what we are potentially up against. This is always the case in situations like this when a celebrity is involved. People can be downright mean and nasty. You are shocked at the length fans will go, no matter the evidence, to the contrary, to defend celebrities they love. I mean, there's a reason for this word, fans. They're fanatics. I've personally already been threatened multiple times on social media. And when I agreed to pursue this, I expected as much. This isn't my first rodeo. But victims who step forward to have their voices heard should not be subjected to that kind of conduct. They should not be targeted. And by the way, according to TMZ, Busby has already sent out demand letters to a bunch of celebrities in order to get them to settle before he files lawsuits against them. Those, he says, who were complicit or participated in this alleged abuse by Sean Combs. He's saying, look, man, y'all better settle before we take this to court. I'm just telling you, bring the Brinks truck out or we go into court. Oh, he already warning dudes. And he also claims that some high profile people have already settled. Now, he says that he's going to first file lawsuits against corporate entities who facilitated the abuse and then file the lawsuits against the celebrities. So it's going to be a very interesting series of weeks ahead. But here's the thing, and I've said this from the beginning. Busby is the latest in a long line of accusations from other people who have sued Combs that claim he abused minors. And yet, mm. nothing in his criminal indictment, nothing in Sean Combs' criminal indictment right. is about minors right. yet. Right. Given this announcement, wow. would we expect a potential superseding indictment to include such allegations regarding minors? Mm. Not only would that delay a trial date, but it would make Combs' defense much more complicated. There was no consent 
defense when it comes to minors. Mm -hmm. And legal experts I've spoken to have indicated, by the way, that Combs may move to stay, meaning pause, all of these potentially 120 lawsuits until the conclusion of the criminal case, which is something we have seen before. And finally, one more update for you on the civil front that may affect the criminal case. And this is with respect to Adria English's lawsuit against Sean Combs. This is the person who claims that she was sexually assaulted and trafficked by Sean Combs at his infamous white parties. Mm. Well, her lawyers have withdrew from the case. And here's the thing. Her attorneys were Ariel Mitchell Kidd and Stephen A. Metcalf. Ariel Mitchell Kidd, as you might remember, has been making the news recently, most famously telling News Nation that a sex tape of Sean Combs and an unnamed high-profile celebrity is currently being shopped around. Now, what mm. happened here? Well, English's former attorneys cited a breakdown in the attorney-client relationship and irreconcilable differences. In fact, Mitchell Kidd told the New York Times on October 3rd that, quote, she never lost faith in English's actual case, just in her. Mitchell Kidd Whoa. said, her case is great. My issue was with her undermining my work and going behind my back doing things incongruent mm. to advancing her case. Mm. But English seems to be celebrating that these attorneys are no longer on her case. In a statement over the weekend, English wrote, I am happy with the decision to withdraw and this has made it easier for her to secure new professional non-clout chasing counsel. <laughs> wow. Now she has indicated that Whoa. she has until November 11th to find new lawyers or Whoa. she will represent herself in this case. Now, we don't know if Adria English is a cooperating witness for the government's criminal case against Sean Combs or not, but when you see these headlines and you see accusations against attorneys who may be representing potential witnesses for the government, it does make you wonder about the credibility of these witnesses, no? What will cross-examination mm. be like if perhaps Adria English is a cooperating witness and is going to testify? against Sean Combs. Will she continue to be a witness? Interesting to think about. How strong is the prosecution's case? This is what I think about. Anyway, I think this is a good summation of where we are currently, the latest in Sean Combs' case. And as always, we will keep you updated on the very latest. All right, so that was seven major P. Diddy updates as defense pushes for quick trial and trafficking case. It's a lot of moving pieces in here. It's a lot of moving things. They trying to get the the trial in May his current indictment has nothing to do with minors they talking about his minors that can come into play that can move things around you got witnesses you got a hundred people new cases 3,000 people reaching out to it's a lot it's a lot going on man I'm gonna try to keep up with it to the best of my ability but it's a lot but if you made it to this point drop real one for real in the comments man you a real one for real until next time self-love and positivity fire squad i got you and you know it Whew.